One trick I do is I move my guitars back in time 10 milliseconds when I'm mixing. And I find, and I, I kind of feel like I'm, I didn't invent it, but I kind of feel like I did. Like literally 17 years ago, I started moving everything around. 20 years ago where I would try and line everything up better together than as if somebody went to the grid in the box and looked at it and went, this goes there because that beats there and that, that's the grid. I find that to be incredibly perfect and nobody likes perfect music. And so once you offset a guitar or a bass for that matter, and you move it, and we're talking like, we're talking between five and 15 milliseconds most of the time, guitar players play ahead. Even when you think that what you're looking at is right, just because you look at it. And again, this is all about listening with your ears, not your eyes and looking at it. Don't do that. Listen back and see, you know what? What would happen if I moved the guitar and move it and go far, go 15 and go, oh, that feels terrible. Good. Now let's go seven. Now let's go five. And then that way you can, what's going to happen is your mid range and your, your bottom end is going to clear up. A lot of this happens as well with vocals when I'm mixing and drums. If I start to move the vocals back, because you've got your center information, kick, snare, bass, lead vocal, there's a big sandwich. They're all on top of each other. If you start, if you're not hearing the vocal, maybe the vocalist is ahead or maybe it's to the grid. If you start to offset things a little bit, all of a sudden everything lives in its own space. And I don't even know how much seven or 10 milliseconds is. I want to say it's a thousandth of a second. I'm just going to throw that out there. Or a hundredth of a second. Hundred, yeah, millisecond, hundredth of a second. Can you hear that? The answer is no. Can you feel that? The answer is 100%. And that's what's important. Don't be scared to experiment with, with sound by movement. It's no different than compression and EQ. Is it a compressor? You know, is it a uh, parallel compressor? Or did you just add EQ that you didn't have? You know, you watch guys like Michael Brower with, with 12 different compressors across a vocal. He's messing with it until he gets the right one he wants. You know, that's not an accident. That's Michael Brower going, it's not about me having 12. It's basically about which ones and which, how much. You know, it's like cooking spaghetti sauce. You know, you can easily ruin it in one second by putting too much salt in. But when you're familiar with the, the pieces that you're using, you can use them to fill in gaps of EQ. Compression is a great example of that. And so is EQ, although my experience with EQ as a guitar player with, with it has been you're adding noise that you don't want. It was that frequency that you're adding was never there in the first place. Now you've added it just because you think it's missing. What else are you adding with that? And what, what is the price to pay for that EQ? If it's doing the job and it's poking it out a bit more, it's making it clearer because it wasn't recorded the way you want, that's a different argument.